I'm Linda Kemp, and I'd like to show you an alternative approach to painting. Now that my painting is dry, I've taken it off the board and I'm ready to start building the layers. I'm going to use a large round brush and start to establish some of my shapes. I'm going to bring a branch down through here, so let's get some color around it to bring it forward. Remember, I'm not painting the branch. I'm painting around it or behind it. There we go. Wash the color away. There's the first edge. Swing it around. And let's pull it across through here. Nice thick branch. I need it to be wide enough to support all the foliage that's going to be hanging from it. Trim this down a wee bit. Make a nice natural looking shape. And glaze down to start my shapes. Alright, so there's the there's the top branch. And let's start working on some of these leaf shapes. Wisteria leaves are nice and pointed. Nice sharp little edge. They don't have a serrated edge. They're just smooth. My aim is to suggest the wisteria plant rather than to describe it. I want to capture the essence of the plant and the movement as it's floating in the breeze. This is dry, so let's put another leaf underneath. There we go. I'm just repeating the same shapes over and over again. I'm taking care to make sure that I have some different sizes, some variety in my sizes, uh, small ones and large ones. And I also want to shift the direction too so that some are moving this way and then balanced off by others working in the other direction. It's especially important when you're working with multiple shapes, repeating shapes, that you add variety so that your painting doesn't become monotonous. All right, let's start on some of these pretty blossoms. Now, as I mentioned, the shape is rather teardrop, so I will use a little bit of the color here and pull a shape down. There's first blossom, a little edge. Make sure I have clean color. That's a little bit more neutral than I want. So I'll drop some clean color in because the color that I'm dropping in now will be the underlying color for the next layer of blossoms that go in. There'll be some white blossoms and some pink and some violet ones. Because violet is made up of a combination of red and blue, I want to make sure that I have both of those colors included. There's a nice little blossom. There's the little flower. I'm not going to go into a lot of details when I'm making these blossoms. I'm not going to include stamens or veins, little bugs or anything like that because all I want to do is get the basic shape down that will suggest the particular plant. I'm working on wisteria here. But this concept and this sort of design that I've got going would be the same type of thing that you would use if you were painting grapes or lilacs, that you would have a cluster of flowers or cluster of berries and you want to make sure that they're designed in an interesting way so that they move and have a little bit of space to breathe in between them. Keep that soft. So this color that's dropped down, that will be another layer of blossoms underneath. Drop in a little bit of pink here. This cobalt violet. There it goes. Wash it away. And cut the next, this little blossom. Larger ones at the top and smaller ones as it moves down the branch. There's a nice one. A little bit of cool blue in there. Little hits of color make it extra pretty. I'll wash that away. Now that little bit of red looks too vibrant, but I'm going to leave it in there for the time being. I can adjust it later if it needs to be, but for now, it's something that I might like to work towards. 
and get some more of it in and see how it looks.